Hello and welcome. My name is Alex Flood. I'm a radiographer and healthcare educator in the state of California. And I'm here to talk to you all today about um, an extremely important topic in medicine. Um, that's asepsis. This time I'll be, I'll be specifically um, focusing on something called surgical asepsis, also referred to as sterile technique. I'm going to talk about some of the basics um, as well as some of the really what I want to talk about are the common mistakes that are made um, when um, when performing sterile technique when you are setting up a sterile tray for something like a minor office surgery. So what are these two things these two uh, uh, you know uh, terms that mean the same thing. These refer to practices that we do that keep objects and areas sterile. Uh, what is sterile, right? Well, one thing to know about sterility is there's no amount of sterility. Something is either sterile or it's not sterile. So the word sterile means to be free of all living microorganisms as well as bacterial spores. Bacterial spores you can think of as the hard-walled um, dormant version of a bacterium and um, it, they're hard to kill, they're hard to destroy. Sterility is being free of all those things. What's a medical assistance responsibility here? Again, this um, this core these uh, these lectures uh, review videos are designed for medical assistance, but could be applied to other categories of medicine. Um, but what is a medical assistance responsibility? Well, one would be to explain the patient preparation. Um, which is usually just kind of getting giving them a feel for what's going to happen. You might obtain patient signature on consent to treatment form. Um, that would be, of course, providing informed consent for the patient. The physician should answer all any and all questions that are needed. Um, but the medical assistant can um, can uh, get the informed consent from the patient. When you get informed consent from a patient and you witness it, you're not attesting to the fact that all of the information is correct. It should be, but that's not what you're doing. You're just attesting to the fact that the patient was read all the information, understood it, and had a chance to ask any questions if they had them. Uh, you may have other responsibilities such as preparing the treatment room preparing the patient, actually like positioning the patient, draping the patient, removing dressings, preparing the minor office surgery tray, that's the, the part about setting up the sterile tray using sterile technique, um, assisting the physician during the procedure, administering post-operative care to the patients, or just as simply as cleaning the exam room. So things to think about. The sterility of instruments and supplies is achieved through one of two things, using disposable items that are already sterile or sterilizing reusable items. Um, usually stainless steel metal items are reusable and plastic items are disposable, but that can vary. Um, common mistakes, right? If a sterile object touches any non-sterile object, we have to consider that contaminated. It's not that it's just a little bit not sterile anymore. And remember, there is no degree of sterility. If something non-sterile touches something sterile, the sterile item is not sterile anymore. We should, we must not use it. And if you're ever questioning it, if you're ever in doubt about the sterility of an item, just don't use it. Replace it with a sterile item. The way I think about this is, you know, what would you want done for you? If you're under general anesthesia going in for a surgery, what would you want done for you if, if you weren't able to watch, right? You'd want somebody to replace the item if they weren't sure if it was sterile. Before you um, work around a sterile field um, or apply sterile gloves, you must sanitize your hands and render them medically aseptic. Um, that's reducing the level of microorganisms to a safe level. Basically, you're taking off all the dirt and oil from your hands when you clean them like that. You should do this before and after any procedure, really, but before and after surgical procedures for sure. Sterile gloves must be worn if you're picking up or transferring sterile articles. So think about it like this. If you're going to touch the sterile field using the guideline that I just gave you on the previous slide, then you got to wear sterile gloves if you're touching sterile things. Otherwise, the whole field is, has been contaminated. <clears throat> Some guidelines to maintain surgical asepsis. Prevent the sterile packages from becoming wet, um, such as if you set up a sterile tray but spill some, you know, betadine or sodium chloride on the sterile field. Betadine, of course, 
kills uh, microorganisms, but still, let's go with that. If you spill anything on the sterile field, it makes it wet, and microorganisms can sort of wick up from underneath uh, the package into the uh, package, and that field is no longer sterile. Uh, remember there, and I put this in bold and underline because everyone forgets it, there's a one inch border, imaginary border, around a sterile field, and we're gonna consider that contaminated. You don't let anything touch that border um, that's sterile. Um, and along those same lines, if you're not wearing sterile gloves, you only touch that border. You should always face the sterile field. Uh, never turn your back, um, and if you leave, cover the sterile field with a sterile towel. Um, if you do leave or um, leave the room without covering it or turn your back on the field, the field is considered contaminated. Hold all sterile articles above waist level. Um, it's not that above waist level is considered sterile, it's just that below waist level we consider it contaminated. If the item loses, or excuse me, if the item leaves your line of sight, it's also considered contaminated. Um, so if you don't, if you lose sight of an item, right, if you turn around, like we said earlier, or if you just lose sight of an item, you have to consider it contaminated. And when you drop items onto the field, placing them on the field, place them in the center, or as close to the center as you can. The physician, once they're, you know, once they're wearing sterile gloves, once they've donned their sterile gloves, they can go ahead and move things around. Again, do not spill water or solution on the sterile field. This draws microorganisms up from below, um, causing contamination. Do not talk, cough, or sneeze over a sterile field. Um, the droplets, the vapor from your nose, mouth, and lungs will contaminate the field. There's microorganisms in that. Do not reach over a sterile field. Dust or lint from your clothes can fall onto it. Unsterile clothing might accidentally touch the sterile field. Same goes for passing soiled dressings over the field. Don't do that. Um, and if a physician puts anything that's soiled on the field, the field is no longer sterile, and we should reset. Always acknowledge if you contaminate the sterile field. This is probably one of the most important ones, right? Because it's really easy to do all of these things accidentally, um, and it can make us embarrassed, right? And we don't want we don't want maybe the physician to think less of us for doing something like contaminating a sterile field. But I promise you, they'll think a lot less of you if you contaminate the sterile field, don't say anything, and then get found out. Okay. So if you do something that contaminates the field, or if the physician does, say something, and you guys can take steps to reset, regain sterility afterward. Extremely important to do that, right? Again, go back to what would you want done for yourself? What would you want done for your loved ones, right? I would want the field to be reset. All right, so this is a quick little um, review of surgical asepsis, sterile technique. Hope it was helpful. Uh, I'll be adding more as we go. Thank you.